All right, guys, today I'm here in San Mateo getting to check out the soon-to-be-released VinFast VF9. This will be delivered in September to customers, and it is one of the few three-row SUVs, which is great for the family. So it's going to join the Rivian R1S, the um, Kia EV9, and then eventually the uh, Lucid Gravity, which is another one I'm excited about. So we're going to check this out today. I'm going to get to take it for my first test drive. And uh, before we do that, though, let's walk through and kind of highlight some of the things that make this unique. Welcome to Bo Family EV. I hope you'll like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Let's go. So look, we know VinFast has a storied history in terms of its development and evolution, but I can tell you they have come a long way. This vehicle is packed with features. A lot of things that I would love to see with my Lightning are included in the VF9. Well, let's start with even just how you open the door. So you just press this right here and you're going to see it's going to pop open. And then you can open up the door and go inside. And let's take a look at uh, the infotainment and then we'll do a walkthrough of the rest of the vehicle. All right, so let's jump into the driver position and take a look at what we have here on the user display. Uh, so there's just a ton here. So we'll start with the simple stuff like the drive modes. You've got eco, you've got normal, you've got sport, you've got a creep mode on and off. So you have a lot of uh, customization for how you want your driving experience to be. You've got regenerative braking, which can be off low, medium and high. So again, just a ton of features there to look at. Uh, as we come over here uh, to this side of the screen, this is gonna be where you've got your different lights. So you've got your uh, auto lights, you've got your fog lights, uh, on, parking, off. Um, again, just total control of what it is that you wanna do here. Uh, over on this area here, this is kind of interesting. You can adjust uh, the side mirrors with your steering wheel. So I thought that was kind of cool. This is your folding mirrors uh, that you can un unfold or fold them. Um, auto fold on and off. Uh, auto tilt, which I really enjoy. Um, I wish my lightning had that so that when you're in reverse, uh, you can choose if you want your left, your right, or both to tilt when you're backing up. Uh, this is your adjustment for your steering wheel. So over here, you can see that I can take this and raise the steering wheel, or I can lower the steering wheel. So again, you can customize that and save that setting however you like. And then you can also telescope it uh, in or out towards you if you need it to be closer. So again, just total customization of the driver experience here. So then as we come over here and go to this area, this is, uh, you can see it's asking if I wanna save the new position there. So this is where you're gonna see things like your um, navigation, your drive aids, your heads up display, what color you want the heads up display. All of those features are here in this area. Um, you can even edit the position of the heads up display. So just so many functions there that you can do. So as we enter climate control, just by touching the fan, this is where you're gonna be able to take and set your fan speed and air conditioning or heat for your first and second row seats. Uh, these also have vented and cooled seats as well as massaging seats, both uh, on the front and passenger second row. Um, and then over here, this is where we can start getting into, again, into a ton of customization here. So um, chimes, you can reduce the chimes that go off here park assist chimes, uh, wireless charging, child lock, all these different things you can customize. And then this is just so great. Every EV should have this. So you've got pet mode, you've got wash mode, um, you've got camp mode, you've got valet mode, all the different things that you need to do. And man, I wish the Lightning had some of these. So now let's take a look at some more customization here where the battery is. Uh, you're going to see your current battery level 30%, expected range 87. Uh, but what I really appreciate here is this screen where you can set your a charging target, which isn't unique necessarily, but this here is something I wish the Lightning had, a charge current limit. So if you're on an outlet that you need to derate um, or some other kind of circumstance, this is really helpful to have. And then this is your uh, low battery level reminder. So that's there as well. So again, just this level of customization is really great. Uh, plug and charge, uh, looks like there's a connection error, but that looks like it'll be a, a future uh, spec that you can have there. And then this is your different displays. How do you want your information displayed. So again, just lots of customization here in the VinFast. So some people argue that they want the battery percentage. Some people want the miles. Um, all these things are available to you. Uh, display power and regen on the instrument cluster. Um, so this again on and off. 
So just this level of detail is something that I really appreciate and I think will be more common in EVs in the future. All right, so let's just talk cockpit feel and ergonomics. Uh, it's got really good visibility. It feels really good uh, in the seated position to me. Uh, right down here, you've got your different shifter gears, park, reverse, neutral, and drive. You've got your cup holders there. You've got a wireless charging pad that I've never found to be very helpful in any of the vehicles I've driven. Uh, these are heated, ventilated, and massaging seats, so I like that. Of course, you got the new kind of ambient lighting that a lot of different people are going with. You can customize that. Um, and then the, the other thing is just from a, a little small detail thing that some people care about and don't, but I really do appreciate that the vents are manual. That is just a me thing. Uh, maybe just I'm an old middle-aged man, so I like being able to have that uh, independent vent control without going into a screen to fuss with all of that. Um, so yeah, it feels really good. Um, and then just for me, uh, position as far as where my arm sits, it sits in a really natural spot. It's got the different controls for the windows. Uh, and then to open the door, it's just got a button on the side, pops right open. So uh, basic, simple stuff like that is things that I've come to appreciate. Not all vehicles have them in positions that, uh, that are the way I would prefer a uh, Cybertruck, for example. Uh, but let's check out the back. So again, to open these doors, we just press on this. It's gonna pop out there, makes it really easy to open. In the back, you've got the same uh, heated and ventilated seats as well as massage. And as we come and look at the actual seats themselves, you can actually get uh, a couple options here. This one is the bench seat where you can get three across, but there's also uh, captain's chairs here. Uh, so kind of take your pick of, of what you're gonna use for your family. Um, if you want the cup holders, this is right back here gonna pop down and this is going to drop and that is where you've got your cup holder area. So uh, you'll also notice the back of all of these seats have areas for a child seat. So you can go three across on the child seats as well. Uh, these are power adjustable. So over here, you can adjust these front and back as well as the tilt and lumbar support. So it's got all these features just like the front seat does. And then even, even the middle seat here, which is interesting, if we scroll down here, let me see if I can get a shot of this. There is a button right here. I don't know if you can see that. And this allows you to adjust the middle seat as well, which is not something I see very often. Now, if I had one criticism of the back, um, I would say it's this area here, which uh, has a little hump. I'm not sure why. Love to see that to be flat. Uh, and then I guess the second thing, if I were to be nitpicky, is the ventilation like the F-150 is here in the center. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the vents in the middle. I like them to be up here, uh, kind of like minivans have. I really wish the Lightning did this as well. But interestingly, they are available in the back seat, uh, the third row. So let's take a look back there at what's going on in the third row, because this is a very unique space. One quick thing I forgot to mention is from this display, the uh, second row passengers can adjust uh, their ventilation as well as their massaging seats, heat, and all of that. And then down here, there is a USB-C as well as two USB-As. So uh, I didn't want to leave that out. Now let's check out the back and see what that looks like on the third row. Um, right over here, you can see this lever is going to make the seat go forward. Uh, there is also a strap right down here that allows you to lift this uh, kind of up and out of the way to make climbing in there easier. Um, and then in the back, there is an interesting way they've gone about this space. So you can see that this is elevated and there's a very small kind of leg room area here. And I don't mean the leg room in terms of front to back. I'm talking about top and uh, lengthwise. So I think for kids, this is gonna be fine. But for uh, adults, I can see this being a little bit interesting. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, one other aspect here from the back of the vehicle where it's got the, the vents and these rails and these other aspects that I think are really cool. So as we leave the second row, you can see it's got these soft closed doors. Um, I've never really been a big fan of those. They don't really matter much to me, um, but I know some people do appreciate those. Uh, underneath here, we're gonna lift the tailgate. And this is where it's got some interesting things that I really think are cool. So uh, of course you've got your third row here that we talked about. And uh, one of the things you can see a little bit easier maybe from back here and it is dark, um, but hopefully the camera will pick this up. The ventilation is located up here on this pillar, and hopefully that comes out in the camera. But this is where I really want to see ventilation, is up here um, on these beams. So right here on this third row, they did a great job of putting the ventilation for the third row, especially if you've got uh, animals back here. Uh, I think this is great 
uh, kids as well, of course, but a lot of people are gonna use this third row potentially for a puppy. So when you're in dog mode, you can kind of keep that area cool. And in terms of uh, dropping these here, it's got straps and this will drop down and then this one will do the same. It would be great to see these be powered, but again, now we're nitpicking, but just look at the amount of space that this opens up. Of course, the second row can also fold down, um, but I like the little things they've done here with the space. So here it's got these adjustable uh, clips so that you can really do anything here for that entire rail. And it's got them on both sides. These are really easy. You just press it down and move it wherever you like uh, to strap down cargo. Um, and then my favorite thing for sure though is on this side, I love power. Um, EVs should all have things like this. This is a 110 outlet. You know, it's not the 240 that the Lightning has, but nonetheless, that is to me critical for when you're in a power out situation, you should be able to plug in an extension cord there, get some stuff powered at the house, camping, all that kind of stuff. So really, really love what they've done with that. So back here on the tailgate, we do have power. One of the little quirks that I came across is that when I hit this button here, you can see that there's a little bit of a delay. Maybe that's a, to allow you to get out of the way of the tailgate, uh, but there is just a couple second delay there before it drops down. Uh, and then if you're approaching with groceries, which is definitely gonna be something that this uh, vehicle is perfect for, uh, right underneath you can take your foot and it should open the tailgate. And you can see it did it right there. So um, interestingly, when I use the key fob, there is no delay, so I can just double click and that will instantly bring the tailgate down. So I have to think this is a safety mechanism that when you're pressing the button, that delay is there. Um, but love that this thing is powered. Uh, that is great to see. Let's go take a look at one of my favorite areas, which is the frunk space. You guys know how I feel about the frunk. Uh, this one is not powered. Uh, you do have to pull the lever twice inside, but let's take a look and see what we've got going on inside the frunk. So. You know, for me, this is one of those uh, areas that so many manufacturers don't take advantage of. And I just think that's a travesty. So here I'm really excited to see that VinFast has made use of the space. Uh, personally, I would again like to see an outlet up here. Uh, I am very spoiled with the Lightning that I have that. Um, but here at least you have some usable actual space. You can put uh, some of your groceries in here. You can put your uh, dinner in here. And again, that's very usable. Uh, you can put just a laptop or um, just plenty of room here. It's not the lightning, of course, but uh, nonetheless, it's a big improvement for what we've seen from a lot of other manufacturers. So uh, kudos VenFast for getting the front, uh, front space right here. So one of my favorite areas of this car has got to be the aero. They've done some really unique things with the design. Uh, and so you can see down here as we go low, right on the side, you've got some areas for the air to pass through on the left and on the right. But this is what I really love, which is this kind of hood scoop area right on the front of the car. And as we circle around, you can really get a view uh, from the driver position of what that air scoop looks like. And so this is just reminiscent to me of those 60s and 70s cars. Uh, my first car was a 70s Dodge Challenger. And uh, it just kind of harkens back to those muscle car era days. And it just gives it a little bit of a vibe that uh, a lot of other cars are lacking where everything looks kind of egg shaped or um, very much uniform and similar. All right, so before I take off on my test drive, I have signed up for a chance to win a free trip to Vietnam. So uh, if you are here in the Bay Area, make sure you come by and uh, come see Jesus. Uh, he'll, he'll help you out with a test drive, get you all set up, uh, and uh, assuming I come back with this vehicle, it will be here for you to drive as well. Let's go check it out. All right, it is test drive time for the VF9. Before we hop in the driver's seat, I do wanna swing around here and show you guys the captain's chairs that are in the second row because this spec has those and I think they're really cool. So let's swing around and take a look inside at what we have with the captain's chairs. Um, I really dig this. If you don't need all three seating positions, I think it's a really great look uh, the way they have this laid out. So uh, really plush and comfortable again heated, ventilated, massaging seats in that second row. Uh, and then here you've got the center kind of console uh, with the cup holders here and uh, lots of shadows here in the garage. But uh, there you can see that. And then you've got the controller screen in the middle, which is gonna let you adjust uh, your massaging seats, your heated and ventilated seats, all that kind of stuff. One of the things I forgot to point out earlier is how they've tucked the rear windshield wiper uh, up here underneath the spoiler. I thought that was a really cool uh, touch there, but uh, let's head around here to the driver position and we're just gonna touch 
the door handle, it's gonna pop out. We got the cool little puddle light down there. And then let's get inside the cockpit and check this out and get ready to go on a drive. So uh, like many of the Tesla vehicles you've seen before, pressing the brake is gonna start up the vehicle. So no need for a start button. Uh, this also has on here um, lots of chimes. Uh, we're going to show you there's a lot of settings for those where those can be minimized as well. Um, but one of the things that I really love here is that it's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So you can see it is bringing up my Apple CarPlay already because I've uh, logged in and synchronized it. So this is really great and very familiar. And so I ask, I love this aspect of it. I know some people will argue that it's just kind of a, a layer unnecessarily if you've got good software, but um, I think this has both. When you look at these buttons down here, so this is where the massaging seats and the heated and ventilation is. And so you can just slide your finger um, and it will allow you to change the different um, ventilation levels. And so same thing with the temperature. The temperature, I can change my temperature setting. I can change my fan speed. And so I can make that as high or low as I need to. And then here, if I tap on it, instead of sliding it, this is where I can choose any of these four seats for my massaging seats. And so you can see the options over here of the different massages. You can see the massage intensity. Um, here you can see again, the heated and cooled ventilated seats. <clears throat> so there are so many uh, just different aspects of this that you can do. But I just think this is great. All the different ways that you can customize it. I'm going to leave it on um, Android not Android, but Apple CarPlay. I used to have Android. And then this has, just like you're used to, you can change the kind of display. Uh, you can go through all your different apps that you have. Um, I'm just going to leave it on the GPS. And then we're going to give this thing a test drive and check it out. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and choose drive mode here. I'm just going to do normal. Creep mode, I'm going to turn off. I don't like it to creep. I'm going to have regenerative braking on high. Then we're going to hit the drive button. And I think we are ready to go. Let's give it a shot. First drive of the VinFast VF9. Thanks for coming along. This ought to be fun. So I didn't get very far before I made a wrong turn. It says truck exit or entrance only. Uh, so good opportunity though to go ahead and hit the reverse button. And then notice how the, uh, the rear view, or not rear view, but side mirror tilts down. And then we've got our 360 view camera. And we can kind of back this up again and head the right direction. I'll say the rear view backup camera is uh, not the best resolution. That's interesting to see. I think that could definitely be upgraded. Um, but uh, it is cool that it's got the 360 camera here, which I like. And now we will go the right direction and hit drive and do this the right way. So uh, learning as we go. Um, now we're off to the adventure. Sorry about that. But it was a good opportunity to see the reverse. I will say that even though it has regenerative braking, uh, it does not hold necessarily and come to a complete stop. So uh, that is a little bit different. Uh, so that's going to be just something that I would have to get used to. Um, but it also has a little bit more engine noise than I'm used to compared to the Lightning. But the ride is smooth and it's relatively quiet. It's just that I think with the Lightning having the motor so far in front and then all the way back in the bed area, I just don't hear the motors very much. Uh, but it is very common in Teslas and even Lucid's. Um, I find that the Lightning is one of the quieter vehicles uh, that I've ever driven. So, um, which isn't to say this one is loud by any means. Uh, it's just one of those things that I noticed that I could hear the engine and road noise a little bit more than with the Lightning. But let's head to the freeway and check that out. So as we're getting onto the freeway, it's got plenty of acceleration and get up and go. I will say it's not quite as strong as the Lightning, um, but plenty and uh, more than enough for the everyday driver. I think zero to 60 is somewhere in the mid five seconds, maybe six seconds. So, um, but it does have that kind of good acceleration, uh, but just not quite the oomph and G force of, you know, a Tesla performance or the lightning for that matter. But uh, nonetheless, it is way better than any kind of gas vehicle would be. Um, and I would say more than enough for uh, any kind of normal driver. So not bad at all. Let's continue on. So now we're going to try the lane keeping and uh, adaptive cruise control function. So right here on the steering wheel is this little uh, button that has a picture of a steering wheel. You can see that it is now displaying that we are doing adaptive cruise control and it is lane centering all on its own. And uh, even though it doesn't have hands free, it uh, does have a capacitive steering wheel. And if I just take my hands off there for a minute, 
you can see that it is turning on its own and driving just fine. And then we'll just put our hands back on there. Uh, but it's great to not uh, have to nudge the steering wheel like you do have with some others. I do think the uh, adaptive cruise control function is a great benefit when you're doing road trips. It's not quite as good as Blue Cruise, which uh, I don't have that anyway in my standard range Lightning. Uh, I wish I did. That is probably one of my few regrets is that I didn't do the Blue Cruise. But if you don't have that, having this kind of capacitive steering wheel is a great thing that I would love to see updated uh, on future Fords. But uh, for now, I have to give it the little nag. And same thing with Tesla Autopilot, the same thing. So that is something I think the VenFast has right with this uh, capacitive steering wheel instead of the resistance. Uh, great job, VenFast, on that. So just as I was coming around this corner here, I just wanted to make a note that it did disengage and then uh, pretty much immediately re-engage again. Uh, it is slowing down for the car in front of me as it should. Uh, but I did want to note that that was a disengagement on the um, on the lane keeping and, uh, you know, adaptive cruise control. So um, here we are coming on uh, some typical Bay Area traffic, and uh, that's going to slow things down quite a bit. So we're not going to make you watch that. So this is something I've never seen before. We are here in stop and go traffic in the Bay Area, which is not unusual, um, but uh, it came up with the front view camera when we got really slow there. That is something I've never seen before. But uh, here you can see the exact reason why my uh, F-150 Lightning standard range works just fine for me uh, because so much of the traffic here in the Bay Area looks like this and I'm not doing 75, 80 miles an hour down the freeway. So uh, I end up, even with my standard range, getting you know 270 miles of range in it because I'm never going that fast, uh, even though it is a brick going down the road when I do. guys we have arrived here at electrify america on harrison street and san francisco this is a really great location it's indoors has a couple lounges and security and i've been here once before in the lightning so i thought it would be a great place to take the venfast so we're just going to charge up here hopefully i'm not making you too dizzy uh, on the charger just for a little bit i'm going to see what the charge speed is we're at like 65 percent battery so i don't think it's going to give us anything dramatic uh, but the charge port door is right here we're just going to pop that open. It does have one of these uh, little areas that you slide out of here. I'm not a real fan of these things that are tethered to it. But um, other than that, you know, a charge port is a charge port. Haven't heard anything about them going to NACS at all. I did ask them about that. Uh, no word if that's going to happen. I think they're still working on an agreement, but maybe that will happen for VinFast in the future. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and charge up for a second, and then we'll hit the road back to VinFast. You got a Porsche Taycan over here. You got a Mercedes. Um, you got a Kia EV9, which I'm a big fan of over there. There's even one of these big electric uh, buses that's charging up. So I love being able to see those types of things here. You've got the legendary Toyota BZ4X, which is actually acting as a taxi. And that is charging up over here as well. So um, 20 stations is a really big deal. and a whole lot better than only four, which is what we typically see with Electrify America. So love seeing this. 
Uh, we are gonna go ahead and unplug and then head back to San Mateo and give the car back. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate you guys coming along for the journey. And uh, oh, here's a nice Audi. Love that one, that's really cool. Um, if you guys ever have the chance to come to San Francisco and check out this Electrify America, I think you're gonna be really impressed. So as we round out the day with the VF9, I found it to be a perfectly capable vehicle. Uh, it's really nice inside with a lot of different customizations that you can make. Um, I know that that is something that you get with the Teslas, but coming from the Lightning, it was really cool to see all the little different aspects of the driving experience that you could customize. In terms of ride quality, uh, the Lightning is a quieter, smoother, more powerful ride. Um, I would say this is probably closer to a uh, Model 3. There is some wind noise that comes through, some road noise that comes through, and I do hear the motor. I don't think that my microphone will pick it up, but as I accelerate, I can definitely hear the, the whine of the motor, and as I decelerate, I hear it as well. Um, <clears throat> that's not particularly unique to the VinFast at all. I think I'm just spoiled being in the Lightning where uh, it is such a quiet uh, cabin. So uh, I know when I've driven the Lucid or the Rivian, uh, I also hear a lot of those noises from the motor as well. So um, overall, I've been really impressed with it. I think it drives great. Uh, I do think it'll be helpful when they can manufacture in the U.S., take advantage of some of the tax incentives. It is a bit on the upper end uh, in terms of the cost. I think it's somewhere in the 70s. So um, I think that overall, though, it's really great to see a three-row SUV. That back row, uh, as we pointed out, though, is really is is often the case is really meant for kids i think the lucid gravity is going to be really the exception to that uh, where they have a phenomenal uh, third row and then the next is going to be the r1s um, and then uh, honestly i think the kia uh, ev9 also just has more uh, appropriate adult uh, type seating um, but then i think this is going to be number four in line in in my opinion uh, but it's definitely a step above you know for example the model y uh, or some others in the three row segment. So um, it's definitely not as luxurious as say a Mercedes, uh, but it's a step above, you know, the, the Blazer, for example, and uh, probably kind of in the neighborhood of the Lyric. Uh, the Lyric might be uh, in terms of quiet cabin, uh, just a little bit quieter, but kind of in that Cadillac Lyric category, I would say. But uh, I've had a great time driving it. I really appreciate uh, the team over there at VinFast San Mateo for letting me borrow it for a day. Uh, we're going to go ahead and return it now, and it's just been a blast, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this sneak peek. We're going to head back and park it, and then we'll wrap up from there. Let's uh, exit the freeway and give them back their car. Here's an aspect that's interesting. I've got the turn signal on and I lose my GPS. So fortunately I know that I need to turn left here, but I did think that that was interesting that the GPS disappears and the cameras come up. Uh, so not sure I'm a huge fan of that. So as I'm here at the red light, I uh, have to keep my foot on the brake. It doesn't have that, that hold uh, that I'm used to with one pedal drive, uh, but we are back here at the Hillsdale Shopping Center where the San Mateo VinFast is. And uh, we are gonna go ahead and give it back to them now. Uh, but it's been a fun day. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I have. Uh, there is the VinFast showroom there that we're driving by. And then we're gonna park it and uh, then we'll wrap it up.
Well, guys, that's going to wrap up my time here with the VF9. Huge shout out and thanks to the VinFast team here in San Mateo. Uh, couldn't have done it without them, and I really appreciate the access to the VF9. I've been wanting to drive this for a long time. Uh, really enjoyed all the different uh, ways that you could customize it. I think it's exciting to see another uh, three-row SUV option. And I hope you guys enjoyed coming along for the ride with me and uh, just all the different content. If you like it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Tune into the Turn Down For What podcast. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.